we're going to look at this little Mercury 8 horsepower. Um, it's got a really common problem which is a stiff um, pivot tube in it. Um, so really hard to turn. Um, if you're diagnosing this problem on a forward control boat, make sure you kind of isolate the parts of the system because it could be the pivot tube here, it could be the steering cable, it could be the helm itself, rarely, but anyway. Um, but in this case obviously it's a tiller steer so all the stiffness is coming from this tube here. Um, so I did actually try and fix this once before in one of the videos um, where um, we're trying to take the steering bracket apart on that 54 stroke. Um, didn't have much luck, it was just sort of way too far gone, but I'm hoping we can save this one. Uh, this video is actually going to be in some ways a bit of an experiment, because I want to experiment with a, um, a couple of techniques, a little bit of research I guess you'd call it. So I'm going to try a few techniques, I'm thinking of trying to adapt something similar to what I did for the oiling of the um, uh, steering cable, or we'll use a bit of uh, compressed air to try and force um, some grease. Um, I also saw another video uh, a long time ago where a guy unseizes a motorbike by just constantly circulating a bit of diesel through it, pumping to the top, picking it up. I'm thinking some of those techniques might help in this situation. So anyway, enough yakking, uh, let's just start experimenting, see what works, um, and uh, by the end of the video I guess we'll both know. You can right. see there's quite a bit of grease around here, because um, the owner has been trying to fix this, sort of doing the right thing, um, which is good, but unfortunately it's one of those things where once it's gone, um, you know, it's, it's hard to bring it back without a bit of extra effort. Uh, now, there was a, uh, a grease nipple here, or a zerk fitting, uh, depending on what part of the world you're from, um, and it snapped off. Now, what I'm thinking is I'm going to get that out first, so I'll probably use an easy out or something, try and get that out, um, or maybe drill an easy out, we'll have a look, I'll clean it up first. Um, but I'm thinking what I'd like to do is potentially temporarily replace that with a barb fitting that's going to allow me to put more material in there than just the grease gun to use the air compressor. So that squeeze bottle is just a bit of made up degreaser. Um, it's kind of a cheap way to buy stuff over the uh, aerosol cans. It's also good when you're doing larger jobs degreasing whole hulls and things if you're going to paint or whatever. So now it's cleaned up a little bit, I'm just going to drill in a little bit uh, to get the... the centre of the valve from the zerk fitting out and then uh, and this is just a um, Standard easy out inside, actually, a little handle I got from a tap and die set or something. Alright. Don't know where you can see that, but the. Get some flies to get that off again, but it looks like the last bit of thread from the uh, broken grease nipples now out. So that wasn't too hard. Makes a change. Uh, so what I've rigged up here is pretty sketchy, but I'm just trying to prove the idea. Uh, so this is the original um, grease nipple, just clamped on to a bit of vacuum hose and the other end of the vacuum hose is just clamped onto an air gun. So I'm just going to try and fill the air gun with some sort of degreaser, uh, rig it up, means I'll be able to sort of shoot it through and then um, maybe even just sort of cable tie the, the clamp on and just keep refilling it. And then if I get to the point where there's enough access, um, there's enough sort of, um, of a channel through, blown through it, then I'm going to try and rig it up to a pump that'll run overnight. So let's try this first, see what it has, what effect it has. So I'm going to use some of this pre-mix. This is, uh, I'll go grab the container for this degrees to show you what it is. Um, but this gets mixed with a fair chunk of water. Um, can't remember exactly what ratio I, I put in here the first time. Just having a lot of luck here. Uh, let's go to a, oops. going to a bit of a squirt rather than a spray.
So, we're not there yet, but I must admit, the early signs are pretty good. Slowly learning, yep. Open the air gun, about the degrees of fillet. Plug it in, push it through. It's staying on the grease nipple really well. Staying on the hose well. Actually getting quite a lot of degrees uh, right into the um, into the, uh, the bushing here. So, I'm thinking I'm just gonna keep this a few times. Gonna let it sit overnight. Uh, then I come back tomorrow and possibly, um, actually probably not in tomorrow, I don't want to leave that long. Let me check the instructions on the box, I'll go get that degreaser. Uh, maybe put some fresh water through, because this is water, um, and you do need to flush out the degreaser. Um, and then I might look at actually putting some, something like a really light oil, like an auto transition fluid or something, put that through, and then just finally put the grease going and push all that through. So, I don't know, I'm, We'll see. But I've got high hopes for this now. So this is the stuff I've been using. Uh, it says, I check it somewhere. Maybe on your side. Ah, yes, your side. You had the instructions. Uh, it says when degreasing aluminium, aluminium alloy uh, must be diluted one part degrees of two parts water. Um, so one to twenty. In general, use one to forty. So I actually think the degreaser. Uh, I had in this was a mixture for general degreasing, which is um, kind of 1 to 40, so pretty uh, pretty dilute. Well, I'm actually going to make up a, a 1 to 2, like it says for aluminium, put a bit of that through. But what it does say at the end is, ooh, um, right, so it says allow 5 to 10 minutes of penetration, hose off thoroughly with water, so I'm not going to leave it overnight, that was bad advice. Um, I'm going to put some more strong degreaser through, let it sit for this 10, 10 minutes, then I'm actually just going to flush some fresh water through, maybe some demineralized water or something. Uh, maybe a bit of metho, metho is quite good for getting water out of spaces like that because it's water soluble. Um, then start putting our oil and grease back in. So um, battery went flat on the GoPro and it's actually a few days later now. Um, but I think the bit you missed um, was simply uh, put a second grease nipple in there now. So there's one in the top and the bottom bearings, bushings there. Um, cleaned out uh, the old degreaser, flushed it all out, put grease back in essentially. Um, and so we're ready for the end result. And to be honest with you, it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, it's definitely, definitely better than it was, but. Um, I don't think the problem with this one was old grease. I think it is more actually corrosion on the pivot tube itself. Um, so I wouldn't consider this fixed yet. Uh, so we're gonna have to sort of ramp up to uh, something I was hoping to avoid, which is actually just taking the pivot tube apart so we can clean it. Um, but look, you know, it's, it's an interesting process. This is a small output, so it's probably a good one to show it on, nice and easy. Um, the pivot tube comes apart differently on different models of outboards. So this isn't really a video on how to do this on a Mercury eight or whatever this is, um, it's more just the general principle of how you get in there and clean this. So let's get going on that and see if that helps. So first thing I do is just take the uh, power head off. Unfortunately, with almost all outboards, um, you need to do that to disconnect the pivot tube um, because we need to take this part off, essentially. Uh, and this is either gonna have bolts on the inside as it was on bigger motors, or it looks like it might need to slide up. I'll let you know I've actually been done this on this motor before so it'll be a bit of an experiment but um, it is quite common to need to do that. And it's not too bad there's only six bolts under here and then obviously all your fuel throttle connections, cut off switch that kind of stuff so a few ancillary things to disconnect and six bolts at the bottom. Okay, power head out. Uh, no real trick to it really, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just disconnected, there's a 
little, um, I'll show you, hang on. So now we've got the power head off. We've just got two more bolts here that look like they're holding this lower cowling on. So we'll get that off and then we're sort of getting close to that pivot tube. So down under here we've got this big kind of circlip I don't know if you can see on the camera there, spinning round. Need to pop that off so that we can get the uh, shift linkage out. So we've got the lower cowling off now. Um, just had to um, push out one of these little roller pins uh, that connected the um, shift linkage for the gear in at about here so we could pull the uh, shift linkage out. Now I'm just going to take out these two bolts from the uh, lower mounting. So now we've got this lower bracket taken off, Ooh, it was around that way, uh, also disconnected um, this reverse lock, so when you put the boat in reverse it locks the outboard from popping up, disconnected that by taking a split pin out of there. Now we're ready just to lift this whole section up and uh, get more of the pivot tube, so I'll just uh, put this camera down and hook this one off. So I've got the, uh, the leg off now. We're pretty much back to that stage that I had the uh, larger 50 Yamaha at when I did the previous video on trying to unseize this part. Uh, that was unsuccessful, it was actually too far gone. Uh, I think this is a bit better though, that particular one I couldn't even pivot, whereas this one you can with a bit of leverage uh, get it to spin. So now we've got to push this out against all the corrosion. So got to be a little bit careful here, I don't want to damage this in any way, so I'm going to start gently, maybe a bit of heat just to try and expand this section a little bit as well. We do have that nylon in there, so I'm not going to apply a lot of heat, but to be honest with you, probably a good time to buy two new bushings anyway, so I'm not super worried about that. So I'm just going to start attacking this, and then once we can get this out, we can clean it up and put it back together. So I've been using a, uh, a clamp like this to try and um, pull this shaft out. Uh, got a little bit away, which is great, so I think this is going to come out, um, but it's just hard to get a grip on it with that. So I'm going to now just weld up a makeshift sort of press, essentially. So I'll weld that up as a frame, and then we'll try and use it to, to get this um, pivot tube out. This all kind of clamped up a bit better now. Um, worries me that it's not a straight angle, so I might try and pack this and straighten it up in a second, but we'll see how we go. We'll see what gives first. The clamps, my welds, and this pivot tube. Okay, so I think that's about as far as I'm going to get with our little homemade press. Um, but I'm going to take it over now and just see if I can, can work it out by hand. Let's see how we go. So we're finally at the point I was trying to get to at that uh, other Yamaha video, which is getting to the tube itself. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of, uh, I don't know if you can see clearly, there's actually quite a bit of rust on there essentially. Um, so what I'm thinking is going on, interesting under that bushing it's not too bad. Um, so I'm going to take this bushing out from here. So these bushings I'm just cleaning up a little bit. Um, you can see in here there's just like old grease in the in the cracks and things in it. So this it's actually a little bit broken as well, this one, but I don't think that's what was causing our problem. Now it's okay for these to lock onto this shaft, so I've cleaned this up on the Y wheel, which means I can now slide this off, all the corrosion's off here. Um, but the grease nipples here are designed to put grease between this tube and this bushing. So it's really supposed to spin here. So it's kind of okay for these to be reasonably tight on here um, and slip on this surface. So really it's the inside of this tube that I'm looking at cleaning up. 
So in here cleaning up and the outside surfaces of these. Um, and then I'll put grease all over these, slot them in, reassemble it and we'll see how it feels. So on the bottom here they come into a bit of a lip too. And I notice there's a bit of this new grease I put in but still quite a lot of old gunk. So I'm just going to clean all that out and then probably put a bit of uh, brake cleaner or something in there, see how clean we can get it. Yeah, there is quite a lot of old. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but there's quite a lot of old corroded stuff that our previous kind of techniques of putting degrees and things didn't get out. So I'm just cleaning inside these tubes now. You can see this one hopefully is quite clear now. Yeah, it was in better condition, the top one. The bottom one though has this really nasty kind of hard grease varnish all around it. I think that's where all the residue has been coming from. So I'm just going to get in there. Um, actually going to use a little bit of, I'll try a bit of brake cleaner. I'm thinking even a bit of carburetor cleaner might be better. And then just using a little wire wheel on a Dremel. So it's not perfect, but it's heaps better. Um, as well as being a smoother surface, the diameter's obviously increased because all that was almost a millimetre of um, kind of uh, like a varnish sort of, like you might find in a carburetor, which is why I ended up using carb cleaner um, and the wire brush. Uh, oh, old grease or something. It was more old grease and a little bit of that um, sort of white aluminium corrosion. Um, so I think this is pretty much ready to go back together now. What I am going to do, so just, oh, sorry, before I forget, um, on this top side, I'm hoping we're actually going to need this again finally, um, is a little tensioner. It's just a metal plate with a bit of rubber on the inside. It slots in here and then a screw comes in here and you can tighten the screw to clamp down on the, on the uh, pivot tube here um, to add some tension if it's too loose. Fingers crossed we'll actually need that. Um, so I, I took that out obviously before I started using the wire wheel up there. So the two um, bushings this are identical. Same diameter at the large end, same diameter, same height, everything. So it doesn't really matter which way they go around. Uh, what I am going to do though is just uh, pre-grease these rather than relying on the grease nipple to get a good coating all over it. So when I put this back together, I'm just going to start with the uh, bushing actually high up. Because by the time I slot it on, I can't really put that in first. Um, this means just using a bit of grease to re-secure this tension pad. Down. Pop that pushing in narrow side first. So that's definitely feeling heaps better now. So now I'm just going to put the rest of this back together again. Um, unfortunately, you do have to take it uh, completely apart to sort of get to this part. But uh, by the time it's clean, it's definitely just worlds better than it was. So, pretty pleased about that. Now, I just got to uh, do the rest. Alright, we'll be back soon. So, I've run out of time putting this together now, so I'll wrap this video up here. Um, needless to say, we've pretty much done the bracket now. It's just a case of putting the power head back on, reconnecting the linkages and the fuel line, so that's not such a big deal. Um, 
I think it's been pretty successful. I've actually been looking forward to doing this video for a while because of the uh, lack of success I had in doing this same job on that 50 Yamaha. I'll put a link to that video if you want to see what went wrong there. Mostly that it just was too far gone. Um, I would like to have thought um, maybe that initial phase of uh, pumping the degreaser through etc would have made a bigger difference and your, my, your mileage may vary, you know, you may find that um, if your outboard isn't too bad that will actually get you from being stiff to being quite usable again. Um, but I don't think it was a waste of time with this one and I think going through that process did help me actually extract the um, the uh, pivot from the tube, you know, so I think that was, was worth it to help with this second phase. But um, if you need to go that extra, you know, stage to get it done, then it's well worth it. So this outboard originally, there's no way I could turn this uh, without holding the stand. That's how stiff it was. So now, as you can see, it's it's very smooth, and I think it'll go well for years now if it just keep it keep it greased, keep it going. So um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you uh, enjoy this video. I hope it helps you if you have the same problem. Uh, please subscribe, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.